Hi everyone, I'm Leah Stricker, curator here at Historic Jamestown. We're back in our wet lab and I'm here with Murray Outlaw, our senior curator, and we decided to take a deeper dive into looking at the North Devon's graffito slipwear um, that we were looking at in our previous video, in the Church Tower video part two. So if you're interested, go back to that one first before watching this one. Um, these are the sherds that were recently excavated from the field. We're gonna take a look at those and also compare them to these vessels that are already in our Jamestown collection, and we're also going to take a look at a uh, complete comparative example. So these shirts we have here are the ones that um, were recently excavated. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about these, Murray? Well, Leah, I do believe you're correct that they are from a dish. It's a fairly lightweight dish. Um, and they are North Devon Scrofito earthenware. And Scrofito comes from the type of decoration. This is a parallel example in our collections of a dish with scurfito decoration. Scurfito comes from the word graffiti, uh, an Italian word that means to scratch. If you take a look at this vessel, which I think dates slightly before the third quarter of the 17th century, because it's a very simple motif and looks like it's probably a bird's wing uh, take a look at the, the back of this vessel. It was wheel thrown, thrown on a wheel. And after the potter took it off the wheel, he used a knife to trim the extra clay around the edges. You know, that would lighten the vessel, mm -hmm. also make it a little easier to lift. Mm -hmm. And um, Sometimes you do find fingerprints on the exterior of the vessels because the potter would lift them when the vessels were still fairly wet. It's really cool with a lot of the ceramics in the Jamestown collection to see evidence of the potter's hands on the vessels. I think that's really spectacular because somebody was making these. Exactly. They're all they're all handmade and the evidence does show up in the individual pots. Um, they weren't made in molds at this time and so you are going to see unique decorations um, and unique features on, on all of the wares that we find uh, dating from this time period. These uh, vessels are slip decorated also and the slip is a, a white uh, ball clay very thinly applied slip and then the designs are scratched through the slip into the leather hard uh, fabric and then they're fired uh, and they are fired a second time with a lead glaze and you can see the lead glaze turns the white slip, this beautiful amber uh, golden color, and the fabric, which is um, kind of pinky gray, fires to sort of a greenish color. So on these pieces, the white is the slip, and it looks like the glaze has come off of it. Yeah, the gla this is frequently found in archaeological context. The glaze often uh, cra uh, crazes off or cracks off. This one, it looks like it's broken off, but this vessel, it appears that the glaze actually just didn't cover the slip. Exactly. So it's still peeking through. This is a very common form found in uh, the fourth quarter of the 17th century and it's a jug and you can see the glaze only covers um, part of the exterior 
The slip was added only to um, the upper portion of the jug and the decoration, of course, was carved through that slip and shows up as this greeny, greeny brown color. And this one, right looks, in here. is this a flower? This, this is a flower and this is a common form of decoration. This, what's called, it's stippling. And the potter used a fork-like device to scratch um, the decoration and then to also poke these little stipple marks um, in the vessels. This piece um, that was excavated recently looks like it has kind of a similar yes, type of decoration. Yes, it has. I hope one day that we're able to track these down to the manufacturers by the types of instruments used. Oh, that would be cool. We saw that this floral decoration was here on this jug. Mm -hmm. um, I know that our comparative, our complete comparative example from your personal collection also has a flower on the inside. Devin. Uh, flowers and abstract designs are very common in the fourth quarter of the 17th century, whereas the bird motif, a very simple carved design, would be very common in the second quarter of the 17th century. And this dish was actually made here at Jamestown in the first half of the 20th century by a potter who called himself the Jamestown Colony Potter. And um, he was basing the shape and the decoration on forms that were found here at Jamestown cool. in the 1930s. And you can see an example of how he used a fork-like device to carve the decoration on the rim mm -hmm. and also used it to stipple yeah, very cool. the flower motif. And these examples come from the Jamestown Rediscovery Collection, but the they, National Park Service also has a huge collection. National Park Service has the largest collection of North Devon Scrofito slipware in the world. Wow, that's amazing. The largest collection, even uh, North Devon. Have the same does amount. not have wow. the same amount as That's we have found here. They, um, this was a huge industry in North Devon in the 17th century. Um, the large collection that was found here was excavated from a ditch that uh, drained, it was a drainage ditch and also a property boundary line for a merchant who was here in the 17th century. His name was Colonel William White. North Devon vessels were recovered from his ditch mm -hmm. in large um, pieces. And the National Park Service was able to restore at least 47 Whoa. intact vessels. That's really spectacular for an archaeological site. As you can see with these, they are definitely not complete. We don't have yeah, all the fragments. It's so uh, very unusual yeah, to yeah. find a situation like that. So the merchant um, probably received these dish dishes broken, in broken condition. Ah. And he just used them to line that boundary ditch, mm -hmm. which was also a drainage ditch. Mm -hmm. And that is not an uncommon discovery in, on archeological sites, using sherds to um, fill ditches and ruts and any sort of hole that uh, needs yeah. to be filled. So that's, I guess, one of the perils of shipping ceramics in the 17th century right. is they might arrive completely broken so he probably never actually used those vessels. Yeah, I don't think he ever used them. There was no evidence of use. They were broken in shipment. Mm, interesting. So I'm curious, I know that North Devon potters were very productive in making a lot of different types of vessels. Um, this one here, we think, we're thinking it might be a dish. 
Uh, what are some of the most common forms of North Devon? Dishes are the most common form, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, numerous dishes of various sizes were found in the, the um, ditch, the drainage ditch uh, okay. of William White. Mm -hmm. And um, the next most common form is a jug. Mm -hmm. um, but we also find milk pans, which are not that common mm -hmm. in slipware. Um, and also uh, bowls, very common. Mm -hmm and um, chamber pots. Ah, cool. And I think, wasn't there also, weren't there also mugs in the Some of the cutest little mugs I've ever seen. Oh, cool. <laughs> and mugs, yes. Yeah. yeah, awesome. I've worked on quite a number of archeological sites in this region, and we never find large quantities of North Devon's graffito slipware on any given site. Usually it's maybe a maximum of two North Devon vessels from archeological sites. They're generally found on high status sites. One of the vessels that the National Park Service was able to restore from uh, William White's drainage ditch was a chamber pot oh, and it has initials and part of a date. Now they didn't find the fragment that had the whole date oh. so we just have the beginning of a date hmm. but the initials are WB and oh. that's probably William Barclay the governor of Virginia at the time these vessels arrived here. Wow, cool. And the date 16, and you can see part of a seven. Ah, okay, cool. So, so it was yeah, very, uh, William White most likely ordered it for the governor of Virginia ah. to gain some sort of favor with cool. him. Cool, that's fascinating. So very, very cool. Okay. So I feel like I've learned a lot about North Devon's graffito slipwear today, but I'm really interested in the Park Service collection because it sounds like they have a lot of complete vessels and different styles of vessels. So is there somewhere I can go to learn more about that collection and more about North Devon's graffito? In 2002, I wrote an article about the uh, collection at the National Park Service, and it was published in Ceramics in America, an annual journal that is edited by Rob Hunter, mm. and it's published by the Chipstone Foundation. And there is online access to that article. Okay. So if people want to know more, they can just go to that website and learn more about the North Devon Scraffito slipwear cool. from the National Park Service. Awesome, and we'll go ahead and put that link in the um, notes for this video so everyone can find that easily. Mm -hmm.